This tour begins here at Treasure Island Marina, and what you see behind me is my number five pick, which is Grand Lagoon. Now, this is breaking a little bit from my usual format, but as you'll see, Grand Lagoon offers so many dining opportunities that I could do a whole show here. You're gonna see what I mean in a moment. Let's get on the water and check it out. The earliest settlers of Grand Lagoon were drawn to the incredible 50 to 60 foot high sand dunes they found and to the shelter and protection this body of water offered. Before the European settlers, native people inhabited this coastline and their relics continue to be uncovered. During the Civil War, this area was valuable for producing precious sea salt needed to preserve food. Around the end of the 19th century, the first tourists began arriving, drawn to the scenery, birds, healthy salt air, and activities like shelling and fishing. World War II sprouted bases all over Florida, including Tyndall nearby, which grew the population even more. Two pioneers shortly thereafter were Captains Walter and Max Anderson, who founded Captain Anderson's Pier and Seafood Restaurant in 1956. Johnny and Jimmy Petronas purchased Captain Anderson's in 1967, and their family still operates it today. Beginning on the east side of the bridge, you'll find Off the Hook, a super casual hangout taking advantage of its position on the water. Nearby, you can pop into Dockside Seafood and Oyster House, a local's favorite with ice-cold raw oysters and colorful views from the tables inside and out. And just a few steps down the dock, one of the newest additions to Grand Lagoon seen, Grand Marlin. It's a huge space for the maximum view, especially up on the second floor. Zipping across the lagoon will get you to Runaway Bay Caribbean Grill, which is really like escaping to an island. Here at the entrance to Grand Lagoon is the gateway to the Gulf. Here you find a luxury resort, the Sheraton Bay Point Resort, with beautiful restaurants and bars. But my favorite is here on the tip of a skinny peninsula that wraps around it like a little finger, Pelican's Dockside. What I can appreciate about Grand Lagoon is really how little has changed in the last couple of centuries. Many consider this to be the purest, most authentic part of Panama City Beach. Next time you're cruising around in these waters, take a moment to imagine the sand dunes covered in fir trees, people in turn of the century clothing, looking at the same birds we see today, and creaky old wooden ships bringing in seafood just as they still do every afternoon. We've got much more to see, so let's pick up some speed and head to my number four pick. 